Hello everyone, welcome back to the Printosaurus. Today we are working with our SV08 again. We have covered mainline clipper and getting that installed. We have done the Eddy USB installation and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to install, set up and configure a hot end swap. And we are utilizing the Micro Swiss Flowtech line of hot ends with a CHT nozzle. So let's get into it. So before we go over uh, what's in the box here, I just wanted to mention Micro Swiss was kind enough to send over this uh, hot end as well as a couple of nozzles to test with. So I really do appreciate that. And let's move on to what's in the box. The Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end comes fully assembled. And what you'll find when you open the box is you'll be greeted with a nice set of fully colored instructions. If you don't want to use the paper instructions on the back of the box, it's a QR code that you can scan as well. And that will pull up the instructions. Once you get your box opened, your hot end is fully assembled assembled, it is ready to go and ready to install. So I'm going to walk you through the steps there on how to get this installed properly and we will utilize the instructions they provided. Now we're ready for installation. So first step here is preparation. Make sure you've got your filament retracted from your hot end so it is free and clear uh, and easy to remove. Now when you do that, if you haven't already removed it, that hot end is going to be hot because you have to heat it up to retract your filament. Make sure you give yourself a proper amount of time so that it cools down and you don't burn yourself. We don't want anyone to get hurt in this installation and I don't want you to end up getting burned. So please be mindful of that. Give it a few minutes to cool down before you start handling that hot end. Next thing you're gonna to want to do is what I recommend is to home the printer and then raise that Z axis about 150 millimeters so you're nice and close to being in the middle of your bed. That gives you plenty of room all around it to work so that we can remove that hot end and install our new one. So let's move on to the printer and I will show you uh, a close up of what we need to do to get this install completed. So now we are on to the actual removal of our hot end. So to do that, you have to remove your fan shroud. So what I suggest is to actually disconnect it. That way it doesn't fall um, in, in the way or anything like that. And it's easy to do. So this is magnetically connected. So gently pull it off and be careful because you do have a fan wire there. Bottom right hand corner, just go ahead and gently disconnect that. And then now we can set our fan cover aside. Once you have that free, we are going to take our two millimeter Allen key. So this guy right here, and we are going to disconnect our fan over here on the right side. And once you have that removed, uh, in my case, I had a zip tie there. It's really not in the way, but it will kind of hang there. So just be mindful when we get to the part of putting the new hot end in, you're not pinching any wires or anything there. So, uh, but set that aside, two millimeter Allen key for that. And then once you have that done, we can move on to actually disconnecting our hot end here. So you have a two millimeter screw down here, and then you have two 2.5 millimeter screws uh, attached here, which is attached to the extruder. So start with either one you want. I started up top. Uh, you do have some cables and things in the way. So just kind of work your way through there. Uh, try not to pinch anything. Try not to disconnect anything. And you'll be able to back out those screws. Once you have those removed, we can move on to our bottom screw here. And what I do and hold the bottom of your hot end here because it will kind of drop and free itself. Um, and this is just so you don't end up with it just surprising you in this process. But unscrew this, it's a longer screw, uh, and that's your two millimeter Allen key for that one. And once you have that done, the hot end will drop out of place, and then you have your thermistor and your heater wire that you have to disconnect here. So top uh, left here, and then uh, middle left as well. And I will highlight these in the video. So you have this one, and this one to disconnect. Now, once you uh, get those disconnected, you can drop that hot end and now we are free to install the new one. Uh, in this example, I already have the new one installed. So I'm just going to show you in reverse order how to get that assembled. So you'll want to press this heat sink up in place. You want your thermistor wire and your heater wire on the left side here. And you will start with the bottom bolt here and don't over tighten this just kind of put it in place so that it keeps 
the hot end from falling. And the reason why I don't want you to over tighten it is because you want to be able to thread or get these started uh, without having any issues and having a little bit of movement there allows you to do that. Uh, this is aluminum, uh, things can cross thread. I don't want you to end up ruining your setup. So take your 2.5 millimeter, reattach those top two screws here. Uh, and then once you have those in place, you can firm those up and then come back and tighten the bottom one here. Once that's completed, uh, come over to your fan side, do the two screws there with your two millimeter uh, Allen key and that completes that setup. Now for your wires, your thermistor and your heater wires, there's a groove here on the heat sink where you can kind of tuck those up in and you're going to use the top left here and the middle left to get those connectors in place. They are keyed. You will see that uh, they only fit one way. So don't try and force anything there. Just take your time. And uh, once we are complete with that, it's easy enough to just reconnect our fan shroud. So to do that, bottom right corner here, uh, push this in place. Try not to force anything again, set that in place, and then just kind of tuck that wire in and reattach your cover there. And now we are ready to start calibrating. In my case, I have an Eddy USB, so I'm going to do my Eddy calibration. If you don't and you're on mainline Clipper and you're still using the stock probe, I suggest a probe calibrate uh, to reset your Z offset there. If you haven't upgraded anything, uh, then you can use the Z offset from the front screen uh, to level and get your offset to reset there. So we're gonna go back through the Eddy USB calibration. Um, we're going to do our probe calibration and then our temperature calibration. Uh, since we are using a new hot end, uh, I wanna make sure everything correlates correctly there. And then also uh, best practice, anytime you swap hot ends or nozzles even, uh, it's a good idea to redo your calibrations to make sure everything is perfect. So our max flow test has kicked off on the SVO8 and we'll see here in a few minutes uh, how it compares to the uh, standard nozzle and the test that I did with that. I was really surprised at how well the SVO8 nozzle did in the flow test. Um, so this will be very interesting. I didn't really see any failures in the tests that I did. So we've completed our max flow test and the Micro Swiss uh, FlowTech hot end performed fantastic. And honestly, I was very surprised at how well the SV08 nozzle did as well. That hot end performed really well in the max flow test. So where is that separation? The Micro Swiss FlowTech hot end uh, really shines in versatility and reliability. So let's talk about that. Versatility because you're able to buy uh, different nozzles and simply cold swap them out. That to me is huge because it is very simple. Uh, it's time saving. And if you're someone like me who goes from a 0 0.4, 0 0.6, uh, 0.8 even sometimes, depending on what I'm printing, um, that is very, very useful. And it saves a lot of time and effort. And just the overall design of the Micro Swiss FlowTech is better than the standard SV08. It is a leak proof design, so that means you're not going to run into issues where uh, we've seen videos of the SV08's hot end uh, where it's pressing out the nozzle uh, with PETG and other filaments, and that means you have reliability issues there. You're not going to have those issues with the Micro Swiss, which is fantastic and at the end of the day I, that's what we want we want a reliable printer that works and we want everything to work right and i think we're finding as i do this series of videos that i'm working on that there are areas of the sv08 that need improvement and that's really what i'm trying to pick apart and show is where can we improve things that we can still get a lot of value out of this machine but also improve everyday printing and the maintenance and reliability of our setup I hope you found some value in this video. Again, thank you Micro Swiss for providing this hot end. It was great to work with. Quality is fantastic, so I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate all you guys. I really do. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.